no one's paying much attention to the hole in the wall anymore. Greek Cypriots are no longer ignoring the Turks on the other side. For 28 years now, the wall has snaked along the invisible dividing line between Turkish Cyprus to the north and Greek Cyprus to the south. The so-called Green Line passes through here, Nicosia. Greeks and Turks are decamped all along the so-called Armistice Line. Soldiers eyeball each other, hurl insults, occasionally shoot at each other. The Greeks call it the Zoni Nekri, death zone. Many call Cyprus the island of bitterness. The fate of thousands of missing Cypriots from both sides is still unclear. Photos tell the gruesome tale of the victims of the summer of 1974 when the Turkish army first occupied northern Cyprus. 1,480 Greeks went missing. The Turks mourned thousands, they tell us. Now in the tussle of political negotiation, everyone is hoping for a bit more clarity. Our side committed crimes in 63 and 64, and some in 74. We're not the innocent and the good guys. It happened on both sides, so both sides will be exposed. So I don't think it will be to the damage of anyone. It will only be to the benefit of uh, both sides, and it will be to the benefit of building a better climate for the future, for the two communities to be able to live together again. Because if we leave open wounds and uh, we proceed to a solution, I believe that uh, the issue of the missing is one of the wounds that will be, then it will be a problem. I expected an answer, whether my son was murdered, or whether he was captured, or whether he is still alive, and if so, then where, and if not, where he is buried. We can then identify our relatives with DNA analysis and give them a proper burial. Only then can we die in peace. It was the most torrid phase in the seemingly everlasting standoff between Greek and Turkish Cypriots. Turkish units poured into northern Cyprus to prevent annexation by Greece. The Turkish minority had to be protected. A delicate game of chess on military and strategic grounds followed. Since the bloody days of the summer of 1974, 30,000 Turkish soldiers have been stationed in the north of Cyprus. Now both sides are divided by the Green Line, a buffer zone more or less across the middle of the island. From here, the UN watches over a fragile peace. The former Turkish town of Petrofani stands as a microcosm of the whole of Cyprus. In 1963, bitter clashes between Greek and Turk Cypriots erupted here. The residents of Petrofani left hand over foot. Since then, time has stood still, an example of the fate of so much of the island. Expulsion, hate, discord. Common emotions for Cypriots. Fighting against the political impasse are two political war horses. Glafklos Kouridis, president of the Greek side of the island, and Ruf Denktas, leader of the Turkish Cypriots. The Greek islanders propose splitting the existing state into two zones. Denktas wants a loose federation of two sovereign states. Progress is slow. I was at the meeting with uh, uh, Turkish Cypriots and Greek Cypriot of leaders of political parties. And uh, it was told at the meeting that uh, we have to overcome this. And one way to overcome it is to admit each side to admit its mistakes and the way they have made each other suffer. And in, in the evening, the Turkish Cypriot leader was on television and he publicly asked for forgiveness for whatever his community uh, has done to the people, uh, to the Greek Cypriots, that has caused suffering. And if it can be done at each level, I think it would help tremendously. Reconciliation in the prosperous areas of southern Cyprus is monitored with a keen eye. From an economic standpoint, the South is more developed than Greece or Portugal. 
The Greeks would like a firmer grip on the north if a partnership were ever to materialise. But the Green Line is still a barrier between the two lands. How long is this going to last? According to the islands impoverished, not much longer. The vast majority of Turkish Cypriots would like to join the EU. Ruth Denktas, however, would rather first see a coalition between the North and Turkey. But Europe offers subsidies and Cypriots wait to see if the call of the euro dollar is strong enough. The stakes are high. Consideration is now being given to whether or not Cyprus should join the EU, an issue which until now has been given little flexibility. Psychology plays a significant role. People must consider both the concerns raised by the Turks and also how mistrustful people are of each other. After reunification, the Greeks intend to buy up most of the tourist areas. Activist groups from both islands met at the buffer zone in Pyla to try to rid the world of reservations. Pyla is no ordinary place. Here the people live peculiar lives, similar to the way they've always lived across the whole island. Even now you wouldn't want to get in their way. They hardly talk to one another and are under 24 hour surveillance by the UN. There's always a danger people will attack each other. Behind raised hands, we are told people treat each other with cold indifference. The solution to our problem requires everybody to think about it. The European Union needs that. And so do the Cypriots and the Turk Cypriots and also Turkey. Perhaps across the world we're quite close to a Greek-Turkish reconciliation. But otherwise, if we're not, we're heading for a big crisis. If no one talks to each other, that's not going to be in anyone's interest. Cyprus will divide unless both sides get a fair hearing. The Greeks and Turks are both fiercely proud of their heritage, a heritage that includes its fair share of mistrust and hatred. The decision to break the barriers of Europe's last divided capital city will come in the autumn. Whether or not the war will come crashing down is a different question. <laughs>